So, uh, Crystal Palace won. Wolves won. Ends our streak of three defeats in a row. Um, and I'm going to try and start with the positives because there were a number of positives today. I think the way that we played in the first half was very, very uh, exciting. It looked like we were back to our best uh, and just failing to take those chances, failing to be clinical, which was, of course, the big argument from or the big complaint about last season is that we should have put a lot more games to bed. And that looked like it was going to be the case again today. Well, I think you could argue it possibly was the case today uh, in that we had the chances to be possibly 3-0 up at half time. You know, uh, Doherty's header, fantastic save by their goalkeeper. Can't complain about that. A couple of blocks off the line. Um, but no real complaints about the first half. I was feeling quite confident at half time. And from our seat in the stand, I spent most of my time with my body faced towards that side of the pitch, which just felt like Wolves had the better of it. Of course, Palace had their moments, a couple of flashes across goal, but Patricio didn't really have to make a save. And I think that's, that's probably the case for the whole game. Patricio didn't have a save to make. And bar a freak deflection uh, in the first minute of the second half, we come away with a, a fairly positive result there. But then, so the second half is the negatives and the points for improvement. Uh, as soon as they went 1-0 down, we was, well, we started the game with a very peculiar formation. It was a little bit asymmetrical almost in that you had Traore playing far out right and then Jimenez and Jota sort of playing centrally but nobody in the respective position on the left-hand side. You had Doherty and, and Traore working together on the right-hand side but Johnny alone on the left-hand side which I think probably forced us to go right a lot of the time. Um, and that was working relatively well in the first half and then as soon as we went 1-0 down he took Doherty off for Neves and went back to the formation that has been tried and failed over the last few weeks uh, in the sort of 5-3-2 uh, and then <sighs> Sace, ridiculous, uh, really naive and hot-headed which we've seen a few times now from him, uh, disappointing from him to get sent off like that. Fortunately, it's only the Reading game that he misses because I think, on the whole, I thought he was doing okay and the back three looked a lot more secure with him in it. Playing on the left-hand side, interestingly, I think, from memory, I might be wrong, but that's the first time I've ever seen Willy Bolly play on the right-hand side of that back three. And that's really the main concern is that Nuno, tactically, at the moment, I don't think is proven himself to be as uh, as consistent or as detailed as we've seen over the last couple of years because he's been very fortunate I think in the way that 3-4-3 was fine in the championship and it tore that apart last year a slight tweak to that playing three in midfield that tore the bottom half of the of the Premier League apart and we managed to finish really really well and now he's got another question to answer his whole philosophy is about finding solutions and 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 that and we'll we are still waiting to see him to find a solution for this uh, this problem here. For me, th the answer is to stop playing five at the back. I know that the circumstances were peculiar in the second half in that we were forced to play four at the back. But to me, just it frees us up a little bit more. If we would, Sace, I think is a really important player in if we if we are to play four at the back because I would, I would either be playing him as a centre back alongside Bolly. But I think at the moment with the players that we've got, I'd go for Bennett and, and Bolly as centre-backs. And then you've got to have that man in the bush gets role, which I know people laugh at when I say. But you've got to have say, so I think that could be to add to the midfield when we're in possession and to drop back when we're out of possession. I think we have to be more fluid in that respect. And I think the way that Sheffield United play as well, I'm not a great expert on how they play, but with their overlapping centre of halves, managing to get the ball forward a little bit quicker. Bolly can put a very decent ball into a box um, from halfway line or from you know 40 yards away from the goal. And that should be something that we look to exploit as well. Just get the ball into the mixer, make things happen. Um, I also think that the balls that we play to the wingers are the wrong kind of balls as well. Um, they're always straight to them, uh, often to the head and it's difficult to control. And then when they do bring it down, they're sort of a little bit further up the pitch, but the ball is still static. 
I don't know if any of you have watched the Barcelona documentary, uh, which focuses on Guardiola's Barcelona, and it talks about, pass, I think it's called Pass the Ball, Move the Ball, and it's all about the pace of the ball, the pace which is on the ball. We don't really have that at Wolves at the moment, and that's that's the problem. I think we've, we're aiming to play like Manchester City, but we're not, we haven't got the technical ability to be able to do that at the moment, and we need to find a compromise, and I think that compromise is slightly... Slightly Sam Allardyce esque, but I think it could work with the players that we've got. Is that instead of aiming the ball straight to the players on the wing, it needs to be ahead of them and over the top of them. If you look at the, the pace that we've got in Jota, Traore, and Jimenez, they should be able to, particularly today against Mamadou Sacco and Cahill, they should have had a field day against those two centre backs, just popping the ball just over the top of them. And yes, he might go long, and yes, he might concede possession quite a lot, but we do that anyway in the way that we whip it out to the wingers. Um, I'd just be interested to see how it develops over the next week or so because I think that the Reading game, I've sort of tossed, changed opinion on this two or three times on the way home from the game. But part of me thinks that they should all be given a rest and bring in a lot of under 23. Some of these players that we bought in from Bayern Munich and from other places should be given a little bit of a go and it'd be interesting to see them in a first team context. But then another part of me thinks it's the ideal scenario to try and. Um, try and try a sorry try a different kind of formation against relatively good opposition, not like you know Sunday League or Punic or somebody like that. It's a a decent team. And try playing forward at the back, get on the front foot because I think the game against Watford on the Saturday might be a game similar to you know that that we saw last year with teams sitting back and trying to soak up lots of pressure and then catch us on the break and nick a goal. So try a formation that's going to get us onto the front foot and you never know, it might prove dividends. We might go and score two or three goals against Reading, be full of confidence, stick with the same formation. But then also with the amount of games that they've had recently, I think they're probably all done for a little bit of a rest and it would be a little bit cruel perhaps to put Cody and Bolly and Doherty, all those players who've played so many games over the last couple of years, to that again. But... What I can say, another positive is that Wolves stuck to it through the whole game, despite the um, the challenges that they came up against, playing for 20 minutes with 10 men at the end as well, to come away with a point in a game where we underperformed for 50% of it, and uh, I think to, to nick that goal at the end was justified. Now, Traore is the last, last piece that I want to comment on, because yes, he contributed by assisting the goal. But from where we were sitting, uh, I, I got to watch quite a lot, of, a lot of him and I watched him quite closely for the second half. And I've never seen, I've never ever seen a footballer stand and watch the match as much as he does. He's the most frustrating player that I've ever seen. I almost felt like it was our duty as fans on that side to be Nuno's voice on that side and tell him to run, to get back. He was... Yes, he's he's electric when he, he's got possession, but he is lazy. <laughs> he seems unfit. I don't know whether he, I don't know what it is, but he wasn't tracking back at times. He he lost possession at one point and then stood there midway into the Palace half and watched them attack. I was gobsmacked, absolutely gobsmacked. I'd love to know why that was the case. Whether that was him, whether that was instruction, I have no idea. But anyway, we've stopped losing. <laughs> we've got a point. It's very, very odd because you look at the league table. We've played six games. We've only lost two, yet we're 19th at the moment. I'm not concerned at all in terms of our league position. I'm feeling quite good going into the, the uh, Watford game now. I think it's important that we rest. Uh, again, see, I've changed my mind again about the Reading game. I don't know what's going to happen against Reading. But I hope that we have a good week. I think that Nuno... Would, would have breathed a sigh of relief with that last minute equaliser, but I don't think he's. he's there's, there's going to be questions asked this week, and particularly if we don't pick up three points against Watford, there'll be even more questions asked, particularly after the way that Watford played yesterday as well. Anyway, it's a long, long season ahead of us, lots of games, but we'll keep going and. We'll keep enjoying as much as we can. It was a lot more enjoyable football in the first half today uh, and hopefully we'll, we'll find ourselves again. They just seem to have lost belief in themselves over the last couple of games. 
saw signs of it coming back to him. Hopefully it'll be it'll be there by Watford and we'll beat them eight nil maybe. Right anyway, thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe. If you want, I'll see you soon. Bye.